We have Gary England from Sumter County Extension here to talk to us today about hydroponic production. Welcome, Gary. Thank you, Juanita. What is hydroponic production? Well, hydroponic production is uh, actually dates back hundreds of years. I guess the first in encountering was uh, down in the Mexico City area where uh, the Aztecs were observed. Uh, they were near this big lake and they were actually producing food crops floating on, on, on the lake. So uh, it's a soilless, needless to say, a soilless uh, uh, way to grow crops and uh, you supply a, uh, of course all crops, or all plants need water and while you're supplying water you're also supplying a very small, a part, a small amount of nutrients which the beauty of this is you can generally grow these crops with a lot less water and a lot less nutrients than the normally required in, in uh, traditional ways of, of growing. So that's a, a nice, nice uh, aspect of it. I've seen this commercially done, but can people do that in their homes? But there's all kinds of uh, things uh, that'll be used. Uh, I have a slide uh, actually showing uh, quite a bit of lettuce. This is a commercial uh, production uh, over in the Sanford area, a farm that produces quite a bit of lettuce uh, this, this time of year uh, commercially. But uh, this, this technology is something that's very easily to adapt uh, to your homes. I have another slide that's basically showing the uh, University of Florida has a uh, publication entitled Building a Floating Hydroponic Garden, and it's a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, way, I mean, it gives you a step-by-step -step process, and it's it's fairly simple. And, and the nice thing about it, it, it sounds a little complex to start it, to start it up, but once you have it established, you can use it over and over and over. It should last for several years. What's the advantage of growing in water like this instead of in the garden? Well, uh, sometimes we've talked in the past. Your, your soil may be uh, limiting. Uh, another nice thing. A lot of people, a lot of these newer houses, you have little, if any, yard. This is something you can do right on your porch as long as you have an area where you'll get plenty of morning sunshine. And I have a slide that shows uh, just one of the little uh, kitty pools about the size of this table, and you could grow uh, enough lettuce uh, in there for, for one family. Well, what do you have to do to start up? What, what steps are required? Well. In the, the publication describes we, we take and build a wooden frame and then use uh, fairly heavy duty plastic, uh, uh, I guess it's kind of like a painting drop cloth except a little heavier gauge and that's to hold the water in. And then there's foam insulation and you can, any, any of your home improvement stores has this foam insulation. The dimensions of the system in the, in the publication are basically to the size of this foam insulation where you put it in. So it's just a sheet of styrofoam? Correct. And then uh, you, cut, you cut holes. Uh, generally, for most lettuce, you can have it on, on a, about a one foot by one foot. So you'd have one here and then a foot on either How side. How big of a hole? Uh, the hole is actually about the size of this. I brought a little pot. Once you have your hole, we have little lettuce uh, transplants or, or whatever you're growing and you put the, the transplant, the, the root ball, in here and punch that down through the, the hole in the styrofoam. Now, where do you get this? There are several suppliers and, and they're all, or most of them are online uh, and in the publication there's a whole listing of them. Uh, generally you don't find that as an off-the-shelf item. But uh, if you go to the, the listing in the publication, you can just send them an email or whatever their process is for online ordering. So you'd put that, insert that into a hole in the styrofoam in a square pattern? or it, Yeah, one it, foot, one foot by one, one foot. One foot square, okay. And then your, what's your seedling, do you get? Well, you grow your, you grow your seedlings until it's a full root ball in a, in a flat. And then the one seedling will go in, into the pot. It, with the soil around it or just the bare just, roots? Just the, well, right. generally those are soilless medias, but, uh, but uh, you put all, all of that in there and it doesn't take long at all. The roots actually start 
going into the nutrient solution very, very quickly. And that's one of the things a lot of, a lot of people don't realize that plants need oxygen to operate. So that's the roots do. The roots, <laughs> yes. yes. And that's the whole reason all the time. for using this pot. That section of the root zone that develops in there is where the oxygen is taken up. And then the, the 90 plus percentage of the root zone is down in the nutrient solution. I have a slide with uh, someone holding a lettuce that was just taken out of the system and, and the roots are way over a foot long. They're down in the in the nutrient. Well, now, what kind of nutrients do you use? Is it just like the 10, 10, 10 or something well, added to the water? Well, uh, there's 20, 20, 20 is a very common. Uh, just a liquid fertilizer that well, you it's get a, in the it's store? Well, it's a, a powder that you dissolve and, and the publication has the amounts to put per gallon. And then also Epsom salts, which is just, about, sulfate. Uh -huh. just about every garden center has that. There's a, a portion of that. So you mix those two in the certain amount. The system, the system in the uh, publication is about 20 gallons of water, so it tells you how much per 20 gallons. But say uh, we have a real warm spell or something and the water level starts going down, say you had to put five gallons back in, you just do a proportional. Uh, okay, don't add just fresh water. Do you ever add just fresh water or you always no. have to add the, fer the water always right. has Right, you want to try solution. and keep your nutrients about the same, same concentration. What kind of crops work in this system then? Just about all the lettuces, uh, Boston, Bibb, uh, you, could, you could try Iceberg. I haven't seen anybody do Iceberg, but Romaine, uh, they all, all do very well. Would leaf lettuces be better that you leaf, can harvest leaves individually as you want them and, and let them continue to that's, grow? That's the beauty of it, especially with something like leaf lettuce. You can almost put one plant in and just about harvest all, depending on how, how many leaves you take, you just about harvest the whole winter off of one or two plants uh, for leaf lettuce. So uh, that's a very good one. And then also there's, uh, say, the mizuna and some of the mustards uh, would work well. Um, also, in, in say in the warmer time, we, lettuces aren't going to work because they tend to bolt when the temperatures, the night temperatures get too high, but uh, uh, some have tried cucumber, uh, has, has worked, and then some of the herbs, a lot of the herbs do very well, basil especially does well. And, uh, but unfortunately, uh, a lot of people, of course, like to have tomato plant. Tomatoes don't do well at all in this system. So your pepper, tomato, those kind of uh, vegetable crops aren't going to do well. But there are hydroponic systems if you want to look further into it. There's some of the vertical systems that you can find on the internet. Uh, there's, uh, I've seen strawberries growing in those. Yes, yeah, strawberries do well in that, and uh, you can grow tomatoes. Uh, there's. Uh, other uh, they aren't in just plain water though they're in some kind of a like they, perlite or yeah, something uh, and then the water media perlite, and water goes through it but yeah. but again the water is metered in at a very very small amount per day uh, and uh, those systems are very good for uh, reducing water and nutrients also okay great well thank you very much my pleasure <laughs>